flocks on harsh alpine meadows. Believe they are not alone in the wilderness. They know the mountains are gods, and that the gods have spawned good and evil spirits who keep watch from the highest crags. The most frightening of these spirits is the man-beast, the Sherpa call Yeti. Famous, what's up? Welcome back to another uh, episode of Dragon Storms, Ancient Myth, Legends, and Lore. Eh, didn't screw that one up. Uh, have a have a great special episode planned for today. We're going to be talking about the legend of Sasquatch. I don't really think he's a legend. I think he's a real dude, but uh, or thing. Uh, Sasquatch Yeti, and some parts of the world uh, they're called Yeti. Um, here they're called Sasquatch. Whatever the case is. That's what we're going to be, and we even have an expert here uh, to to talk about it. Also, Bill Crooks, who's kind of an expert in everything. So, um, and I have play a, one on YouTube. Only one on YouTube, right? <laughs> Don't ask your family. And, and I have a story to tell about my, uh, a, a, an encounter. I don't know how how to explain it. If I was to define it, I would say it was in fact a Sasquatch encounter. But um, then we'll get into that. And my wife. Had a, has a story, and I'll tell you about that. I'll see you got the picture of a foot. We'll get that in the, involved in here, too. But anyways, right now, I think I hear the phone ringing. I think I do, too. Hello? Greetings. This is Alexander Storm with this month's riddle. Perhaps you have what it takes to solve it. Here we go. I am a shadowy vision of the world that was... A pool full of night, freezing nature's laws. A pit full of time, filled with bones and claws. An inescapable fate for those who wandered my shores. Good luck. Thanks, Alex. I, I, think, I, I think I actually think I might know it. Um, Bill, Bill, Bill's probably got it working overtime. You might have this figured out. Matt, you might too. I think this one I might know, and if I get it, I'm being, I'll be really proud of myself. So that, by the way, you guys, the, the, the winner of this particular, uh, riddle, uh, month's riddle wins, uh, dinosaur claw, huh? How many could say they got one of those? Is that a tooth or a claw? Tooth. It's a tooth. It's a tooth, right. Oh my God, man. That's cool. Yeah. I really my, that's bad. Huh? Yeah. No, no. Is, is that, it's a real tooth. Yeah. That's a real tooth, man. Yeah. Well, do, do you know I what kind of know. dinosaur came? From? Yeah, it's a spinosaur. It's called. It was actually a very uh, um, vor voracious uh, uh, carnivore. Um, really? Yeah. Well, how big was? I think it was kind of at least halfway tethered to the water, right? Um, yes, there was some. There was some that were more water. Uh, and I actually have a smaller tooth from the water version, which is yeah. Which is very small tooth, like that, which was a big creature too. These are the ones a lot of times you'll see that have that, like almost like an alligator look to them or a crocodile yeah. look to them, yeah. with a little bit more of the fins and stuff on them. Aren't they? Aren't they I think like longer arms than you associate with like a T Rex, something like that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Matt. What you saying? Yeah, I said weren't they? You know, it's similar in size to like the T Rex, like that kind of yeah. creature. And I never knew that. Yeah, with a better reach. Yeah, with a better yeah. reach. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, alligators essentially and crocodiles are essentially our dinosaurs. They are the the remnants of that in the Jurassic time period. There's a few there's a few um, you know reptiles and stuff that have been around for 65 million years. I don't know what they did to survive the survive, but that's a debate I would get into with my wife on another show. Literally another show, another uh, show called <laughs> well, Mister and Mrs. Right. This week, you guys. So. And by the way, so everybody make sure to submit their riddle 
Um, there'll be a link up here where you can you can click the link and go to submit your answer for the riddle. If you if you answer correctly, and there probably will be a handful of that do. There's a random drawing. He pulls out a name. Boom! If you win, we'll we'll you know we'll ask for your email. We'll send you an a, a package with the not only not only a package with this gift, this cool ass tooth. I mean, how many people say I have a dinosaur tooth? And then. And he also gives you some other gifts and merch and like swag from his book and stuff. His book, Dragon Storm, is um, the Gates is Volume One, and Abracadabra is, is Book Two. And now he's working on Book Three, so make sure to check that out also. So for now, uh, you guys, first of all, Matt, let me welcome Matt to the show. Tell us a little about your expertise and knowledge of um, Sasquatch. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go so far as call myself an expert, more just a, an armchair enthusiast, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've yeah, yeah. you know read the books, seen all the, the shows and all that stuff, and it's constantly something that people ask me about. You know, hey, you're the Bigfoot guy, you know? So yeah. that, that's where it really comes in. So I'm glad Tony uh, was able to uh, let me join the conversation here today. So, so let me ask you, in your opinion... Do you believe Sasquatch or Bigfoot is real? So the short answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that for the most part, the it's more likely than not that it actually does exist. I agree. B I Bill agree. and Tony, do you do? How do you feel about that? Uh, same. Yeah. Same. The Bill, you too. A big part of it is that there's legends regarding, um, from the research that I did, there's legends that go back six or 7,000 years. So you yeah. have culture everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world, not just in North America and in Nepal and places like that. So everywhere in the world, it's very similar legends that go back up to six and 7,000 years. There's something to it. Uh, and we are missing something in our evolutionary chain, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that yeah, everybody yeah. fails. That, I mean, there is something that has never been found between, uh, whether it be Australopithecus from Africa and then, and then the jump to the chimpanzee and then to us. So we are missing some things in between, which are bizarre is a bizarre story in and of itself. But, um, yeah, yeah I, I don't see any reason why, um, it, it, it can't be real with that many people of that many locations having the same story, you know? All over, yeah. I mean, the Indians, the Native American Indians are not, I mean, they had their gods and stuff that in the sky that they worship. You know? But they had legends of big, their own Bigfoot and like type of this character, Sasquatch, whatever it was. They, and they passed it down for thousands of years. I, I just don't see Native Americans like just making something up like that, right? They're just not, they, to make it up, I mean, I know they had beliefs that they were, they somehow made up too, so it's hard, hard to say. But just to make it up, what, like, what would be the point? Right. Well, they made I, a I word for it, Gunnar. Think about that. They made their uh, the Native Americans, whose as a, the vocabulary is limited to begin with, right? They came up with a word just to describe this yeah, creature, this still Sasquatch. Up. It's their word, you know. You know, it's not just we, one. It's not just one tribe. I mean, it's like across the all whole spectrum. You know, yeah. all these groups of people have the same sort of legend you know about this protector of the forest or you know and it just it's just pervasive it's all over it's, it's all over the world too well would you mind if you don't mind i'm going to tell you what this is this is me i'm a woodsman i'm a hunter i spend a lot of time in a very remote wilderness um because i'm a trout fisherman and a hunt and i my this is my opinion based on going out into very remote areas of, of northern michigan there there's if I wanted to disappear, I, I, I'm a human, right? So imagine if there's a humanoid which has senses that are greater than my own because I believe the Sasquatch has a nose that can smell like a bloodhound or a bear or a deer or whatever. And it has padded feet so it can move quietly through the wilderness. Um, it's, 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 you know, it has a coat of fur so it can survive winters. Maybe it, maybe it hibernates. Maybe it doesn't. At the end of the day, I I spent a ton of time in the woods, and I've only seen in the woods one bear, right? One bear. I've seen them like driving or whatever, like, but in the woods where I'm out there in the wilderness, and now I know there's hundreds, if not thousands, of bears in northern Michigan. But yeah, I've never found. Them. Yeah, exactly. We know all about them, but I don't find bones of them. 
I don't see them. I don't hear them. They're, they're there. You just don't see them. Now, imagine if something as smart as a human or almost as smart as a human, because if I decided I, I no longer wanted to be seen, if I just said I've had enough with humanity, I no longer want to be seen, I'm going to live in the wilderness and just live out the land. I could, and you would never see me again. No human would ever see me again. There, even if the cops were looking for me, you could never find me. It'd, it'd be impossible. I would just drive to a spot, park, get out, and walk into a, a, a remote wilderness. And I would set up camp. And if a human tried to come near me, like if I heard it come, I would hear it or see it or detect it long before it ever knew I was there and I could move away from it. Because if my, let's say my parents, um, you know, if my parents raised me to be terrified of humans, right? If I was a Sasquatch and my parents, just like the bear, a bear teaches its cubs to be terrified of humans. At the very smell, sight, or sound of a human, they run for their life, like terrified, right? Same with deer. They're the same thing. So, but there's millions of them. So if a bear teaches its cubs to be terrified of humans, to run from humans, uh, evade humans whenever they see them or encounter them, imagine if a humanoid was like, hey, listen, these people are bad, stay away. These things are bad, for stay that far. Get as far in the remote wilderness as you can and avoid these things at all costs. Humans are dangerous, they're killers or whatever. I mean, this is the thing. In northern Michigan, this is a true story. You can look it up. You might want to look this up, uh, Tony, and add this in here. But in northern okay. Michigan, the loggers a couple hundred years ago when they were logging, um, they made the loggers sign uh, a contract that said if you see – a Sasquatch or something thereof, you cannot, like it was an NDA. They had to sign an NDA. You cannot oh, yeah. disclose it to anybody. And the reason for that is if they suddenly said they saw a Sasquatch out there, then the federal government would freeze all the logging in case there's some endangered species out there. And then the, the logging company couldn't make their millions. So they made them say, hey, listen, why were you worried about this? Because people had seen it and reported it in the past and say, hey, yo, we were out there logging and we saw something here and they're like, shut up because the government will, will stop the logging if they, they think, you know, but I mean, I think if, the, if a Sasquatch does exist, I think he's smart enough to, to evade human detection most of the time, but not all the time. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why we get right. And he can't be just one guy to have Sasquatches perpetuate over all this time. Presuming they they are bound by the same biological laws as us, roughly, there has to be thousands, at least okay. a couple thousand, yeah, right? Yeah. Over the world, yeah. But I think there could be a, a small handful. Like, let's say there's only 500 moose in northern Michigan, right? And they get spotted. I've seen them a couple times. Um, but if you let's say you had 50. Sasquatches in the Upper Peninsula. It's a breeding population, very slow. They might only have one or two children in their lifetime, right? So it's right. just kind of, I think it could be more. It could be 100 to the Northern Michigan is a very remote, very big area. And you could, you could have a couple thousand and, and be out. And that right now you have 3,000 wolves in Northern Michigan. Nobody ever sees them, but there's 3,000 wolves. They, they kill your pets and stuff. But I'm just saying, if these were that smart. I think, Bill, you're right. I think you could have a breeding population, just cougars in northern men. Nobody ever sees them either. They're out there. These animals. And with that few numbers, it would have to be a semi-organized breeding pattern. You wouldn't be able to pick the hot one. You just have to pick no, the one. No, one. You just happen to have one. They just, it's right. It's not like deer where they go with the buck. The, the does go in the heat. They only want to mate with the yeah. big buck with the big rack. I think a, a, a male, and like we've talked about this, Bill, me writing a book. I, I want to write a book. Uh, about a Sasquatch, through the eyes of a Sasquatch. I'm going to write a novel, but it's told through the eyes of a Sasquatch and his whole upbringing and existence and his whole story of life. And he doesn't have an interaction with a human. And 40 years later, he recognizes that same human and him. They see each other. They both happen to have bad scars on their faces. So when they see each other, they know that it's the same one. And anyways, I'm, anyways, I'm just saying this, this particular Sasquatch in the story that I'm going to write his whole goal in life is just to find a mate. And it, it takes him 40 years to find one. So he's basically wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, log knocking and, you know, calling, oh, trying to find a mate. And he does find one at one point, but she was killed by like a bear or something. And then, uh, so he got to look, keep looking and eventually he finds one. But anyways, yeah, I think that if they were, they were to, in order to breed, they probably will take what they can find. There's so few of them that he just, that they can find one of them. 
They can have, they can, you know, procreate and have a, a child. And I think the mortality rate is probably really low. I think growing up in the wilderness as a Sasquatch, you, you probably have a very small chance of survival between predators and freezing and starvation. You, see, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So oh. you, a, a, a female Sasquatch may have 10 babies in her lifetime, but only Listen, one I, survive. But I just wanted to stop you there because when you're talking about the females, I, you guys remember that the video footage, right? From like what was it, like yeah. six or seven? That was the famous video footage. So they the they digitized that, and it's funny that you're saying the female because Bigfoot has always been a masculine, right? I mean, yeah. growing up, we always thought of it like a masculine type of term. When they digitized this film and they enhanced it and they looked at it with a microscope, it actually has right. breath. It's a female. Yeah, it's a female. Um, I, so I didn't mean to interrupt. My thought with that is think. always like, if, if you're going to make a suit, why would you put breasts on it? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't I even think of doing that. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think that makes yeah, it more you don't, legitimate. You don't sure. Just like a female gorilla, for example. You know, when you don't when you say female gorilla, I mean you don't think breast. You know what I'm saying? But right, the right. person, if maybe the person, if it was if it was a fake, I don't I don't I don't know if it was. Maybe he thought, hey, this is more human than gorilla, so I'm going to make it with breast. On the other hand, if it's more human, if it's real and it's more human than it is gorilla, it might actually have breast. And so right. you would have, uh, I think, very much like a. a um, well, very, very much like a human, really, uh, raises their child. Uh, a Sasquatch, in my opinion, would probably raise their child for 15, 20 years. Right. Probably around age 14, 15, 15 20 years. The, the, ch- the Sasquatch is a grown adult now. And the parent says, you know, just like uh, a, a mother bear, when her, uh, her cubs are grown, two years old, she's like, get away from me. Leave. Get the, I mean, it's just instinct. Push them away. Because now you're competing for the man like I am, you see what I mean, right. or mate or whatever. So this, so this, if it's a young female Sasquatch, she's got to just wander off into the wood and, and do what female Sasquatches do. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with smell. They may urinate or leave smell on a tree, rub their backs like bears will rub their back on a tree and leave their scent there. And it may take ten years, if you, you know, for another Sasquatch to happen to come by and say. That's another Sasquatch. She starts yelling and oh, making noise, banging the tree. And maybe this Sasquatch female has been gone for a year, but maybe she stayed in the area. And who knows? What do you think about that, Matt? What do you think of the, the whole well, reproduction? Well, you know, I, I go back to like uh, in Florida, they call them the skunk ape, right? Mm-hmm. right. And because these things are supposedly like vile smelling. And I always thought to myself, well, you know, in the wild, maybe that's like, Related to pheromones, or that's how they find each yeah. other by this by yeah. the smell, and you know, oh, that's exactly, maybe yeah. that's only when like you know the the females looking for a mate, they emit this odor. You know, I I don't know, but I, that's what I think of when I when I talk about that. You know, hundred percent. I lived in Florida for twenty years, and even the people don't smell that. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, like it's that, that hot. The Yeti, which is the the uh, the in Nepal and stuff like that version of yeah, uh, Sasquatch, which is supposed to be a lot more aggressive too. It's not such a it's it's more of yeah. a monster yeah. than than ours is. But it's funny. It, it's uh, when they did it in 1921 and they were doing the translation. It was uh, Yeti, which was being uh, abominable. They he said abominable smelling man of the snow, right? And then it got it just got uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> poorly translated again into abominable snowman, uh, but it was the abominable smelling man, uh, and I think that's a. I didn't even think of that. I think that's really a uh, yeah. an insightful idea that that because there's such a small population, the pheromones are so strong to attract each other, um, and that could be what this uh, you know atrocious stink and smell is. Again, an, another part of a tale that's uniform throughout the world, right? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty so bad reports. when you stink on ice, though. <laughs> yeah. There's so, there's so many reports I mean, of people, when they have these encounters, they smell it first. Right. You yeah. know, it's, it's this horrible smell that smells like right. nothing else. Right. Now, I can't yeah. smell Google pheromones, can you? So somehow the pheromone, if it is, I, I'm saying I can't smell wild animal pheromones in the air when I'm walking around. But if this is a pheromone that you and I can smell, it's probably very close to a human secreted yeah. pheromone, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to smell it. 
I, I, you know, can you, you know, imagine know. every animal's pheromones as we walk through the world? You know, I have a feeling crazy. that it's it's um, it it's smell. It's it's the reason. Like Matt's got it right. I have a feeling that the reason why these creatures may smell is simply because it, it emits an odor. That, in my opinion, I think these animals have the nose of like a bloodhound or a bear. They're very similar or even a deer. These are animals who can smell a human being at 500 yards away or more. Honestly, a bloodhound could smell one of us a thousand yards away. So if you're downwind, a thousand yards downwind, a hundred percent, one of these animals can pick up your scent. Boom. Now, if you're, if it's a very strong smelling male or female uh, odor, pheromone, he might be able to smell it at 10 miles. I don't know if you know this, but have you ever seen polar bears? Dude, this is a true story. You can look this up. They have stories of seeing a polar bear walking in a straight line on the snow, and the helicopters are watching it, right? And all of a sudden, bang, lifts up his nose and does like this, and it smells. And that bear, for 50 miles, will walk in a straight line to a dead seal. 50 miles away. He, that 50 miles, he walks for three days and goes to a dead seal. I mean, or whatever it takes them. So I think these animals may have that type of sense. And the reason they do and the reason they smell is maybe to to find each other. You know what I'm saying? To try to, because they're so rare in, in, in population that one of these are maybe 10 miles away. And one could go, I smell a female or I smell a male. And they, they make a beeline straight towards that, that other. Because uh, maybe that's how rare they are in the woods. Maybe ten miles, twenty miles, fifty miles. I mean, and they find one, and it might take five or ten years for them to encounter another one of the same sex. You know, right? You know, well, I don't know. There's, there's and it, thing, are they omnivores? I, I, I have a feeling they're omnivores. I've, 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 I've watched some shows. Like there was this kid saying, he said that he saw, and I believe the kid. He got up in some some town hall. This is actually in Michigan. There's a whole town hall about the Sasquatch sighting. And there's like 50 people showed up, and they all gave their testimony. And this kid was like 11 year old kid, and you could tell he wasn't lying. He was, I mean, he was. There's no way this kid could rehearse and say it this good. There's just no way. And he went out. He said I was playing in the yard. He lived in a rural area, but kind of like how I live. You know, nobody. I'm in the middle of nowhere, but a little bit of people around and. He's like, I went in the bows out playing with my dog or whatever, and I looked up, and there's a Sasquatch standing there with a dead fawn under his arm, a dead deer. And it, and it looked at me, and I looked at it, and I looked at me, and I looked at it, and it ran off. And he's like, he's like, that. I mean, this kid is like, why would he make that up? And it was followed by story after story of things that are similar. And one was a woman said this one kept looking in the windows of our house, coming around our house. Yeah, I remember that. Man, look at the one. So why would she make that up? So my thing is maybe these animals are curious. Most of them are very evasive and uh, like uh, aloof. They don't come by humans because they were trained by their parents. You know, they raised to be terrified of humans. But every once in a while, you get a, a kid who's, I guess, a dummy. I mean, we all do dumb stuff. I did as yeah, a kid. I think of a young one being rebel. curious, right? Yeah, yeah rebel. exactly. A young, dumb kid. And he's, he's like, what's going on over here? What is that? You know, it's smelling around and and that's how we get these sightings, in in my opinion, you know. Like, you know, has have any of you guys ever had an experience at all? Not with Bigfoot. No. Well, the then I, I don't get out. Much, the only thing that ever scared me in the woods was turkeys. Believe it or not, in the middle of the night, we surprised some turkeys, and they took off into the brush. And man, I crapped my pants. Hey, let, let me make this clear: turkeys, they weren't. The, if they were on the ground, they weren't turkeys. No, they were in, in the trees. Oh, they're in the trees, yeah. Because they, they, they're not on the at night they roost. When I'm deer hunting, they all fly up into the trees yeah. and they make so much noise. They're just oh my God. They're, they're crazy. They make so much noise, crashing and breaking limbs and <laughs> like it's freaking things drive me nuts when I'm hunting, man. So I guess I'm gonna tell you my then then I'll tell you my uh Sasquatch story quick. Yeah, but you're waiting to hear it, right? You gotta do the drum roll for it though, right? Yeah, drum roll. And so so the quick story is when I first got out of prison, I was out of about a month and a half and I wanted to go salmon fishing and I didn't know where to find any salmon up here. Lo and behold, there was a river right by me that had salmon in it, but I didn't know that yet. So I just told my wife she had to work. I said, I'm going to take the car. I'm going to drive up about an hour and a half over to Mackinac Bridge and go into Hiawatha uh, State Forest, which, by the way, is where they, if you guys, I'm sure, Matt, you probably saw the footage. 
it, the, the the eagle cam footage where you see the uh, the Sasquatch walk on the so that yeah. happened in the high water. That's where I was. That's where I'm, I'm about to tell you the story in general that vicinity. So I find a salmon river and um and I and I fish for it and then I'm like well if there's salmon in there there's got to be steelhead which is our rainbow trout that goes in the lake and it comes back in the spring and that, that they're really hard to catch but they're fun. So I go back in the spring with my wife um because I I get a bunch of salmon there. Very, very remote area. And by the way, this is the only place I've ever saw bear, um, like out in the woods, bear. I mean, I was all in the woods all by myself. Like, I part, I, so it's about, I think it's like, I think it's about 14 miles off the road. So, so it's 14 miles a long way, man. You know, you know, down, down a, like a dirt, dirt road, then about seven or eight miles on a two track, and then it just dead ends and then it's wilderness. It's literally probably 50 square miles of no roads or nothing. So it's like 50 miles with no roads, except lo some logging trails. Once it ends, you're in, you're in there. The logging road ends and game over. And there's some creeks that go around so you can't get past them. So I go in there, find a spot, camp, beautiful spot. My wife actually found the spot when I was uh, fishing. She goes, I went down this logging road and it ends. And there's a beautiful spot overlooking the creek. And we could camp there And next time we come here. So we did. So I end up going there with her and i know there's some brown trout in these rivers at night is a good time to brown trout fish so we're back in there 14 miles back into the wilderness way the heck back in there that day i caught a steelhead so i had we had surf and turf i, I fished the steel uh cooked the steelhead and some steak uh we had beautiful camp there it was late about 11 o'clock at night maria's kind of nodding out by the fire and i go down this like river banked hill it's about 30 yards there's a, the, the stream is there and it's a good spot with a deep hole. And I'm trying to cast and catch some brown trout in there. I always wanted to catch a uh, brown trout at night. You know, I'm trying to catch it. So I'm sitting there. Uh, very, I hear the fire crackling and Maria's up there nodding out a little bit. And all of a sudden I hear, and keep in mind, this is a very, very quiet night. It's, it's a silent night. You know, it's, those nights up there, once the sun goes down and stuff, it very rarely the words any wind. So it's not a breath of wind. It's silent, bro. Nothing. And all of a sudden, I hear a bloosh. I hear a rock hit the water, um, probably 25 yards, 20 yards away from me. Um, and you feel it as much as you hear it because it's a big rock, you know, or it's what it sounds like. And it was a big rock. Kabloosh. My first instinct is I turn around. And I said, Maria, I said, you throw a rock. And she says, honey, did you throw a rock? I said, no, are you joking? She says, I'm not joking. I, I didn't throw nothing. So I said, yeah, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, could it be a beaver tail? Because sometimes beavers are moving around. They see you and you spook them. They slap the water with their tail. But that wasn't this. That wasn't the sound. Um, sometimes a bullfrog, a big bullfrog could jump in. and do, But there's no way. This was way bigger than that. This was the sound of a rock, maybe the size of a softball hitting the water. Um, and I, all I could think of at the, at the moment, at the time, Cause I'm thinking in, in the nature, it's these weird anomalies happen. I even had, I've had fish jump out of the water, steelhead. Well, they'll just jump and they, bloosh, but they sound different. It's more of a splash. You know, they come, they breach the water for air sometimes, bloop, and you hear like a, a gulp, like a gulp. This, not, this was kabloosh, you know, and I felt it, you know. So I'm thinking to myself, the only thing it could possibly be is, is, uh, maybe a, a branch of a tree that was hanging off or broken off and just fell at the right angle and just hit the river like with straight on. It was like, bloosh, and could make that sound or possibly, you know, the river bank goes up and there's rocks in the river bank and maybe a rock kind of rolled out, uh, broke free and rolled out and bloosh, hit the water. So that's in my mind what I'm thinking. This is weird anomaly. It happens. It's life. So I've had some weird crap happen in nature or whatever. No big deal. I just go back to fishing. So I, I cast, cast, about three minutes later, another one hits the water, but this one's closer, like 10 yards from me. Kabloosh! And I freaking go, honey, did you, th are you, no, I said, honey, are you messing with me? My wife does not curse, but I'm going to curse just for emphasis. I don't curse either. My wife goes, Gunner, get the fuck up here right now, right <laughs> now. And I said, and I shot up that freaking, up that, that hill, and I picked up a machete and a pan, a frying pan. And I started going, ah, best mother ever. And I'm screaming and yelling for like 10 minutes. Like, and, and I, and she, and I, we're both going, what the frick? Now, I, I mean, you know, so in my mind, I sit there afterwards and I'm like, there's no possible way anybody, not a human, could have got within range to throw a rock at me 
it's impossible because I'm a hunter and I'm a woodsman. I can hear a deer at 100 yards, dude, when there's no wind or nothing. Like, I know the sounds of animals. If I know the sound of a possum moving through the woods. And I can, in a night like that, I could have heard a possum at 40, 50 yards away, kind of going through the leaves, crunch, crunch, crunch. I know the sound of a cat. I know the sound of a skunk. I know the sound of a raccoon. I know the sound, because I spend so much time deer hunting. I spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in the woods and you see everything and you're, and you're in a tree stand. You just kind of watch the world go by. And I'm like, there's no way anything could have got that close. But there are some things. And here's the thing. A bear, which has padded paws, can can walk through the woods almost silently if they want to. A deer can walk through the woods silently if he wants to. Now, it sounds impossible, but I've seen him do it, and there's a way to do it. And basically, I've seen deer. Wa- my wind's blowing this way. I'm watching a deer crunch, crunch, and loud. They're loud as hell. Crunch, 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 walking through the leaf, crunch. And all of a sudden, it cuts your wind. As soon as it cuts your human wind, it's going crunch, 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 and then bang, nose in the air, looks right toward you. And all of a sudden, it gets spooked, and it go- It walks away in silence. How does it do that? How does it go from Crunch, 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 absolute silence where there's nothing. What they do is they walk, they put one foot down very slowly, and they edge any kind of sticks or twigs like a, that, that. They can do it almost instantly. So as their foot comes down, their, their hoof comes down, they kind of move, under, like if they feel a twig or a branch or anything that would crack, they kind of move their foot over and step on the soft part. And they can move, they can do that almost instantly. You know, they're, they move slowly, but if they're, they're, they're moving slow. But they can move silent. Now, this animal, if if that's what this was, a Sasquatch, he has the same ability, probably padded foot, and uh, the ability to move silently through a woods at night. That also means he has to have night vision, well, like a cat or something, or a deer. Or, uh, cats and deer and bear, they can all see at night. And if there's a tiny bit of um, ambient light, they can look, they can see as good as we see right now. So he'd have to have night vision, padded paws, and the ability to move in silence. Also, have hands to pick up a rock and throw a freaking rock at me. And all I could think of was, this is, this had to be in a freaking Sasquatch. This is no, what else could have been, right? So this doesn't end though. I'm telling you, the story don't end. So the next morning, my wife and I, I do sleep that night with a machete next to me and a knife and a, and a BB gun. In my mind, I'm thinking, I, my wife probably said, you, you scared the shit out of anything that was within a mile of us. Like, you know, you, you, you scared that thing to death. Like you, that thing was probably terrified. I'm like, I hope so. So I went to sleep thinking that. So I woke up the next morning. My wife, it's a nice sunny day. We looked at, we had three days left to camp there. And she looks at me and goes, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable staying here. I'm like, me neither. <laughs> so <laughs> we, I was like, let's break camp. Let's get the frick out of here. It's a little creepy. So, so this is what's crazy. So we're in a lighthearted mood. We're breaking it down. It's like noon. We cooked the breakfast up, had some coffee. We're breaking our camp. We're about halfway done breaking the camp. And I hear, crash you could ask my wife dude i wish i could have her on here there's a loud crash and the sound of something running away from us but it wasn't a bear goes a deer this was sounded like like a human running man so this is exactly what my reaction we looked at each other what and it was close it was only like 30 yards out of our camp in the woods I looked at her. She looked. I go, "What the frick was that?" She's like, "I don't know." I'm like, "I'm gonna go see." She's like, "You ain't leaving me here." It's like, because I, I grabbed the machete. I said, oh, "I'm gonna go look and see what it was," because it sounded like a tree fell over or something. In my in my estimation, what I think happened was this animal climbed, started to climb a tr- like a rotten tree, and either fell out or the tree broke and he fell out, or maybe he just pushed the tree over to see our reaction. Maybe he walked up, was watching us, and he's just like. I'm, what are they going to do? Uh, push this tree over, this rotten tree, because he, he knows it's a rotten tree, and, he's, and it crashes over, and we turn and look, he turns off running. Or if, I don't know. So I said to my wife, I'm going to go look and see what this is. You ain't leaving me here. So I said, well, come with me. And I walked through the woods a couple hundred yards looking. I didn't find anything, right? Still ain't over, though. This ain't over. The next week, I really didn't want to go back there ever again, <laughs> really. But uh, I did. I've been back several times since. So the next week, my cousin and my two of my three godsons, uh, Vitor and Luigi, they're like, um, I, let's go steelhead fishing. I said, all right, we'll go to the spot. You know, and, and I tell them the story, right? And they all look at me like I'm crazy. They think I'm full of crap. You know, I tell them the story and they think I'm full of shit, right? And I'm telling them, you know, just saying, I'm not full of shit, man. I'm telling you this really happened. We go there and camp, sitting around. And I don't really bring it up because I think they know, they think I'm crazy or full of crap. Like, or maybe I'm trying to scare them to be funny or something. You know, that that's my M.O. 
Dude, we go to sleep at night. They got, they're all in a tent. They're all three of them in a big tent. And these kids are like, one of them's like 10, one of them's like 14. And then my cousin, my age. Dude, they're all snoring hard as hell, like a symphony. And I'm in the tent next to them, right? And I'm falling asleep. I got my machete and my knife, and I'm falling asleep. And, and just as I'm falling asleep, I hear, I hear the like, sound, that sound. I right, I snap right away. I'm like, I'm like, yo, yo, Vito, Luigi, John, you guys hear that? You hear that? Nobody wakes up, nothing. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Did you guys hear that? So now I'm thinking, damn, now, now I'm laying there kind of wide awake, you know, tense, wide awake. Thinking after a minute, I'm like, eh, maybe I was just hearing it. Maybe was, boom, it happens again. Kablu, same as rea- it was closer to something. Kablu, Johnny, you guys hear that? You know, they don't wake up there. in the morning. They wake up. I said, did you guys hear that last night? Hear what? I'm like, oh. So <laughs> I mean, that that's my experience, Matt. What do you think? Wow, that's that's pretty awesome. You know, and my thought is the only thing in the woods that can actually take a rock and throw it into a river or a lake or whatever. Would either be a human or a Sasquatch. Ha- something with hands. You know, right. I mean, a bear can't throw a rock. No. It's and there's a lot of there's a lot of reports of people getting things thrown at them too. Yeah. Um if, if you do the reports, I'm sure Tony's yeah. you know, Tony, Tony, like people are in their like hunting cabins in the woods and they like clunk rocks hitting off the roof, and then they hear them in the background like ah and then log knocking and what, log what, knocking. what is yeah, what is that all about, Tony? Well, I know that they said um, from their study of, the, of primates in in, uh, in Africa and places like that that the the knocking and the clicking is actually a way that they communicate with each other. Um, so a yeah. lot of the things that, uh, from what I had read and what I had saw, they said a lot of the people that believed that they were hearing things being thrown and things that were you know hitting things, it was actually part of the communication back and forth between the creatures, possibly. Which was, you know, rapping on the tree, knocking rocks together, things like that to make the clicking sounds. Um, and, you know, that that's a telltale sign of primate communication, you know, without verbal communication. Um, so that's probably, you know, a lot of what these people are reporting. It may not be directed at them per se. It just may be in a very quiet environment and they're hearing the, the clicking and the tapping and the banging of, of you know. Of, of, well, what about the the people who report like the rocks being thrown at their cabin and stuff? Yeah, there's logging companies where a bunch of guys said that rocks were being thrown at them. And- yeah, I saw ones with the logging company where they had a machinery that was getting tossed over, right, and getting moved. And this was this was older than like you know um, protesting times and stuff. This was back in like the 20s and the 30s, I think. Um, and you know they would leave for the day, they'd come back, they'd find prints, of course. Um, you know, that were odd prints in the, in the mud and the ground. And then they would find machinery that was hundreds and hundreds of pounds, you know, tossed to the side or moved, um, you know, that shouldn't have been moved or couldn't have been moved. Um, and they attributed that to, you know, it, it seems it, it seems like there's a um, almost like this blasé attitude by the people who live in this environment, uh, you know, like the loggers and stuff like that. It's almost like this expected thing. Which is funny because you said that they had the uh, the non disclosure forms, right, for the yeah. logger admission. It's 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 almost like uh, you know something that they're aware of, and they're almost like the rest of the world may not believe this, but you know we're out here all day long, yeah. every day, and we see evidence constantly about this stuff, and they don't even yeah. talk about it. You know well, the two the two people that did that old video in sixty seven. Um, the younger guy is still alive, and he said, "I wish that we had never filmed that video." He said, it destroyed my life. He said, it destroyed my life. He goes, everyone thinks I'm lying. My wife almost divorced me over it. I mean, really, it, at the end of his interview that I saw, he said, it was the worst thing that has ever happened to me. You would think it would have been a great oh. thing. You know, but that's, again, uh, when someone says something like that, that adds also validity to their story, I think, you know. Sure. Um, you know, he didn't, sure. he didn't play, he didn't play it up and make, you know, money off of it or anything like that. He said, you know, I well, tried to defend Even guys, it. you know, Anthony, that die and say it was a hoax, you can almost see, like, there might be a bond between you and the thing you saw. And if it wasn't going to be found in your lifetime where you're like, hey, the last thing I can do is cover his ass and say I, I hoaxed it. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's almost it's like, like a romantic, romantic notion, but I could see somebody doing that. Dude, but. that's the ending of my book, Bill. That's what gave you the idea. Remember, I told you that's what he had. And he, he, actually, he actually finds this Sasquatch that he saw 40 years old later. And he's a Sasquatch hunter, famous one. And when he does find him, all his equipment goes off. He gets the cameras. And those guys are like, what'd you get? What do you need? And he says, 
I didn't get nothing. It was a false reading, and he they don't he don't want he don't tell that the guy's real that right. the Sasquatch is real. Well, you know that, but, that's you know my what? take on it too. Like I I love the subject. I'm really into it, but to a certain extent, I hope they never get found. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. But you know, here's here's the thing. Thing. I'm saying all the the, the all the false hoaxes and everything, it, it, it actually is destroying the myth because nobody wants to believe it anymore. You know, as yeah. with the advent of, of the internet and all, all the, uh, the propaganda movies or the, or the false, you know, videos that people make, it, it, there's so much false stuff out there that it destroys the true real legend, which, you know, is a six or 7,000 year old legend, which is amazing. I mean, that's just amazing to me. Know. Yeah, there were there were a couple guys who just came out recently too that claimed that they were responsible for so many of the the Bigfoot footprints oh. that have been yeah. found all over. You know, they they said we've been doing this for years and years. You know, so but there are you know, a the number guy, of them that seem real. Yeah, you know, the guy a guy came out later that said he was wearing the the monkey suit for that famous video in '67. And they said yeah. when they interviewed him, he didn't, he, he couldn't even get to the location where it was filmed, you know. So it's somebody yeah. else who's trying to profit off off of saying sure. like you said, that it's a hoax, you know what I mean? So and well, every, the funny every, thing about every, him, is, yes. he, he's a guy named Bob Hieronymus, right? And w they actually filmed him walking, and it did look like the the actual video. Really. Yes, you know. Yeah, I, but anybody can do that. I, I could replicate that movement, you know. No, no, wait, wait. wait well, that's the point. You can't. You can't. Did you see the study? They tried to. They tried to yes. replicate the gait and the movement, and they could. And they used an athlete, a very tall athlete, athlete with similar gait to the to the subject film. Yeah. And yeah. according to their scientific experiment, they could not replicate the the gait and the movement and balance at the same right. time. Yeah, you could try, but not get it right. You can't get right. it right. right. Particularly the flexing of the foot was a problem because the foot arched in the top of the foot and the toes curled up. Right. And they're like, it, it happened up in the air, the turtles curled up. Uh, and you're and talking about video, like, oh, 1970. The, the enhanced video also, uh, which I'm going to post in, into the edit, the jawbone, which if you look at the uh, at a primate or a chimp, you know, you would expect the mouth to be kind of where ours is. It's actually lower down here. And there are two or three frames in that footage that show the jaw go down, open and close like that. And there's no way that anyone yeah. was going to ask in 1967 no, yeah. that automated with No this costume thing. was doing that. No. Um, and that, and that, not only that is the chimpanzee go or gorilla, I'm sorry, the gorilla uh, costumes that were around back then, they had a mouth in a, in a uh, located in an area a similar hole. to humans. No, but similar to where humans would be, not where the, the gorilla and chimpanzee primate uh, mouth opening, which is more down here. So anatomically, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, it's almost like when we're talking about the shroud. If somebody's going to make a a, 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 a a false costume or, you know, a hoax, they're going to use the material that they know. And the material that they know right. would have been, you know, a mouth where you would expect a mouth. You know, would they have put breasts on, on it? Um, would they have padded the feet and things like that? Because you can see there's no, not wearing sneakers or boots in the video when they've been able to enhance it now. It's it's solid all the way through. Um, and would they, you know, would they be able to to pull that off with all the movement and the gait and everything like that um, in 1967? We're not talking about a time when there was a tremendous amount of... Um, animatronic or, or a CGI. There's none of that. This is, this would have to be, you know, very artful, um, you know, props yeah. and, you know, and, and costume creation, you know. Well, there's also uh, an one thing that kind of gets me though, is like when Gunner talks about his experience, if you know Gunner personally, he's not a small guy. He's a big, scary guy, yeah. right? And he wasn't trying to film it. He was trying to get the freak away. Yeah, yeah. So that's the yeah. one thing that gives me pause is these little nerdy guys are supposedly chasing it and like, oh, my God, yeah. When Gunner's experience was like, nah, man, I wasn't trying to film it. I was yeah. trying to survive. Yeah. To get, the yet, get out of this experience. The yet, it's, it's a little scary. weird. It's, it's scary. scary. You hear the unknown, but when something like that happens, your first instinct is go, ooh, ah, there might be a Sasquatch there throwing rocks at me. Honey, uh, let get my camera ready. Let's go. No, your human instinct is... Mother effort, what the? F I'm trying to live. This guy's trying to kill me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the reaction. There was a doctor in California who was with his family. 
he was up on a ridge. He he saw. He say he claims he saw the the Sasquatch do the big flip, and that was his reaction. His reaction was, he said, "I didn't look it in the eye because I I know from that you can't do that with bears. It's a challenge." Yeah. So I figured, you know yeah. what, I'm going to stick to the same idea. He got down yeah, the ridge yeah. as fast as possible. He said, "Get up now. We're le-, you know like." And they weren't listening to him. And he you know and he said, "I demanded we got up and we left." Once we got away to safety, I explained what was going on. And I think he said, my wife said, you know, why didn't you take a picture? And he goes, I don't know, because my whole family was here, and it was a tremendous monster, and right. I wanted to get you away from it. So I think you're right. Yeah, yeah I want to survive this. I don't want to be famous for capturing Bigfoot. Yeah. Or being killed or, or vanished. Every year in Michigan, 50 people vanish. And I would say 99% of that is from wolves and, and mountain lions or whatever. People get lost, they get hurt, and they can't. That that's really to be the most damning evidence, in my opinion, of of the fact that there should or could could be and should be and probably are Sasquatches. I I would literally go ninety percent, and the reason for it is I am an outdoorsman. I spend a lot of time in very remote areas, very remote. And dude, if I wanted to vanish, I could. And that's no. So if an animal of that intelligence, who was raised by parents that taught them to avoid humans and stay out in the wilderness and survive off the land, they could. There, there is so much um, land still left in America or North America or the world that, you know, especially if you go over to like, you know, Siberia and parts of Russia and say Asia, very, very remote areas. They have their own Sasquatch sightings too. But there's even, even the, um, the Olympic Peninsula and like Washington and British Columbia and Canada, you know, and where I, where I go, I mean, where I go trout fishing, there's a section where you get on a road. And you drive like ninety miles, maybe maybe hundred miles. It's freaking nothing, man. Nothing. Like there may be an occasional like trail that goes in, and then it's like fifty miles that way. So ninety by fifty, nobody's in there. Humans may go in there to hunt on the edges. You know, you can drive in a trail for a mile or two and get out and walk a few hundred yards. But you know, if you were want, if you were a Sasquatch, you could go in there, or human who wanted to vanish. You could just park, walk in, and never to be seen again. There's no way nobody could find you ever unless they had a GPS on you. But there's nothing out there. You could just go. A Sasquatch could spend his entire life in that section of the world, never to see a human ever in his entire life. And yeah. if he heard a motor, like a four-wheeler or a dirt bike or something coming, he could just run the other way. No one would ever know. Oh, I mean, if he was smart, oh, no, that's a human. I'm out. I smell a human. I'm out. I mean, there's no freaking way. It's just like if I was hiding from the FBI on the run because I killed somebody and I'm in the run. I could get out in the woods and hide, but if a human came, he would come in a car or he would come crashing through the woods. And whatever the case, I'd always be listening. I'd always be smelling. I would always be hearing. If I heard a car coming, then I'd get alert to it and I'd watch. And if I take saw off. a human coming, <laughs> take off. Right, exactly. We go back to the Native American take on it. They didn't always view him as a completely physical being. They thought he had magical properties. Yeah. One thing would be like a hypnotic thing, like he could make you not see him. They had this aura about him, but they also thought that maybe they were interdimensional and would just could could come into our dimension and leave. Well, I like think the Native Americans they believe they were magic. They have a similar in in Nepal. They have a similar um, belief too. In fact, there's actually in one of the I don't know which one of the peaks it is. It's one of the seven peaks. Um, there's actually a false doorway carved into the mountain where they claim the Yeti can pass through and you know come in and out of. You know the Yeti to me are are, are um, they actually I guess they probably have the older legend um, in that area in those in that. Area. Oh, that's cool. I wanted to show you that, this, that my wife just, by the way, I, there's one other story I wanted to share, but look at, look what I got, huh? Oh, wow. This came from, uh, so the, the story behind this is, a, you might know the story, uh, Matt, Bob Titmus yeah. film site. This is what it's from. So Bluff, GA, California, 1967, signed by the guy. Made with uh, Mount St. Helens ash. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Somebody sent me that, uh, got me that. But here's the thing. I awesome. what, Tony, I'm, I'm going to send you an image uh, after the show, and you can send uh, – um, Post it. You can put it in here. Dude, listen, th- this is crazy story, too. My wife, while I was in prison, um, she found the, the image, Bill, so I came prepared. So she, she, my wife, when I was in prison, she used to go for walks in an area that was not far from here, actually, uh, maybe 25 miles from here. 
and um, very, very remote area where nobody goes. Okay, so it's again, you're, it's an area where it's like 50 square miles of wilderness. There's a, a trail, it's like a loop about a five mile like hiking trail, but there's a few like offshoot logging roads, whatever. She likes to get way back in the woods. So this is about early spring, probably you're in April, mid April, April, May. So, so the, at the time, you know how when you're walk, when you're walking and you, you, you step on like, um, like kind of muddy ground, your foot sinks in a little bit, right? Sure. So what happens is if you step in that, the little bit of muddy ground, your foot sinks in just a little bit lower than the rest. When it dries, when it, when it dries out, the sun comes out and the water and everything dries up, the, the, the land, the, I mean, the area around the print is all dry, but it leaves kind of a wet footprint, right? Okay. So you know what I'm talking about. So my wife is five miles back and it was hiking along and just so happens to stop to tie her shoe. And in the middle of the trail, but not going the, not going this way, Tony. Mm -hmm. But going this way, cutting across the trail, as if okay. something in the woods was like walking along and stepped on the trail, one step on the trail, mm -hmm. and then like obviously their gate was big enough to where there was no two steps on the trail. It was gotcha. just like something stepped on the trail and kept going in the woods. Five miles back in the woods. Now, now the only other option for this is a prank. W would somebody? Go five miles into the wilderness and put one random print in the middle of nowhere, right. and and then hope that somebody would like stop right. to tie their shoe and look down. Like she just happened right. to stop to tie her shoe and look down, and it was there. Now I'm going to send it to you. You can put it in here. So as I'm oh, talking, yeah, you can put it in, and you can discern you can d discern what the first. Now it's literally a footprint just like this in 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 the mud, but it's not really in the mud. It's just what's left, and it's still kind of wet. Where the ground was wet, but the area around it had dried because the you know the season is dried out. Maybe maybe it rained a week ago, and when when it, whatever stepped there, you know it stepped in there, and so now everything had, the ground had dried, but the print because it was a little lower, it, it made more moisture kind of settle in it. And dude, right. if she puts her foot next to it, she got a picture with her foot, her little size six. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. She does it. And she sends it to me, and That's she sends amazing. me that. And and, and 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 I'm in prison at the time. She tells me like this is the story. I'm like, what the frick, man? <laughs> like, just to give you an idea how remote where she was is, just to give you an idea, that same exact trail on another day. <laughs> this is funny. My wife was walking along, and she comes across two badgers, right? And she don't know what they are. My wife don't even know what a badger is. So so <laughs> she's walking in, and she goes. They're coming at her like they're they're like they flatten out and they're coming at her and she she pulls her phone out and goes hey what are you guys you guys if I can find that video I'll, I'm gonna send you that video but you can hear she's going what are you guys what are you guys are cute what do you want and they're like Rah. dude they're like blocking the trail they won't let her by right because she's trying to go but they got a den right on the edge they, they, for, for whatever reason badgers like to dig their dens right on the edge of trails for whatever so there's like there's two dens right there probably with babies and they're like trying to protect it and she's going hey you guys are cute and it's like she kind of backs them up and they kind of back them up a little bit and she she finally oh, scoots man. by them then my, she tells my cousin the story and he's like what are you freaking out of your mind do you know how freaking you know how dangerous those things are <laughs> he's like what i didn't even know what it was it's funny, they're man. They're like knife-wielding maniacs. Right. They're just fearless. They don't fear. They chase bears around, bro. They yeah. chase They chase bears. Yeah. It's crazy. They're fearless oh animals. So, I mean, but that's how remote where this area was to the point where, like, ba like badgers are, 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 like, typically, I mean, not really scared of much. But, I mean, you don't really see them ever. They do avoid humans, typically. But, yeah. but they're so remote. There's no humans out there. There's no nothing. So the odds of some kids taking some footprint like this, walking five miles in the woods, pressing it into some soil, going across the van. I just don't see it happening. I think there was freaking something out there, man. Makes sense? Yeah. It does. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, go around the table. The concession is, give us your concession. Everybody, what your thoughts are, and will we ever find a Sasquatch? Well, Matt, I, I mean, personally, I, I think – Unfortunately, I think we probably will find them. Yeah, you know, I think so. It, it probably won't be something that's good for the Sasquatch, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, so that's why I said earlier, you know, I kind of hope they never get found. But I do believe they're out there. I think 
the evidence that we have is also, you know, this DNA. Uh, most recently, it was I just saw a thing about uh, in Bhutan, they did eDNA, which is, you know, the um, where they a- extract from like water, any mm-hmm. creatures that have drank from that water, swam in it, whatever, they can extract DNA from that. And one thing that they found in this late, remote lake up in like 15,000 feet was something that was 99% a match for a human. Yep. So, you know, in 1% is a big difference in mm-hmm. like genetics. Yeah. Uh, chimpanzees are 98% yeah. a match for humans. Right. Whatever this was, was 99%. You know, yeah. so it's clearly not human, but it's really, really close. So, close. I mean, I think, I think they're out there. I think they exist. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a good topic of conversation. If you had to guess where where where, where 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 like the highest concentration of Sasquatch would be, where do you think, in your opinion? I mean, I would say Canada, you know, northern, like California, Washington, like the the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, Russia. I mean, there's some Siberia and stuff. Just probably the most remote place in the world. Still yeah, left. yeah. Russia I mean, has their own like, legend. They have their own I legend. Mean, I, too. I think there's more people in like Canada and the United States. So we're seeing, we're getting yes. reports about them, you know, out in yeah. the remote, you know, areas in Siberia, there's no one out there. And you no. know, who's going to listen to them anyway, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think, Bill? Well, I think if it's there, it could be a descendant of some kind of ape. You know, there was a, a prehistoric ape called the Giganta Pithecus. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred thousand years extinct, but it was in Asia and it definitely existed there. They've got lots of teeth and stuff. They used to sell them as dragon teeth. Yep. It could have come across the Bering Strait. And they lived in woods. And when the woods dried up is what caused their extinction. Plenty of woods in North America. So they're tailored to it. Like, I, I don't think a gorilla or a chimpanzee or an orangutan is conditioned to survive. Yeah, it could have been but this thing possibly was. You know, will we ever find one? Yeah, I think so especially with all these TV shows and stuff, I'd be floored if our government, CIA people, haven't already found it uh-huh. and somehow relocated it. What do you yeah. think, Tony? Um, oh, I, I definitely think they exist as to whether we would find them. I would like to find, uh, you know, I would like to find a, uh, a skeleton or, um, you know, an unidentifiable yeah. uh, droppings in the woods or something like that that, would probably lend a little bit more towards a creature in, around the world that's been around for six or 7,000 years. Um, you know, of course, you know, there's theories back and forth. Maybe they bury their dead. Maybe they do this. Maybe they have a, you know, like yeah. the elephant burial ground kind of thing. So I would like to see some of that stuff appear first. I think like Matt said, um, it probably wouldn't be to that benefit to be found. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, if, if they've lived separate and apart for who knows how long, that's probably where they should remain. Um, as far as the evolutionary questions, I mean, that's that's a huge gap that you know this could really put some some filler into, and I'd like to see it for that reason too. Um, and I have one story. Are they the missing link? But I have to tell you, this is a great a great tidbit that I found. So uh, a rich American in like I guess it was like the 30s or something like that. Don't don't quote me on the dates. He hired a scientist to go to Nepal to look for the Yeti and to do investigations. And he put together all these teams of Sherpers and they went to all the different villages. He wanted to interview and get all the different stories to get an idea of of how consistent they were. So when he went to one temple, um, the the holy men there said, we have a hand from a Yeti um, that's preserved back in our Holy of Holies. And they brought him back there and they showed him a hand and he took a picture of it. He said, can I have it? They wouldn't let him have it. He sent the picture back to, I believe it was the Museum of Natural History. um, And the scientist that studied it said, you need to get the hand. I don't know what that is. He went back to the, to the holies, uh, to the priests in the Holy of Holies. And he bartered with them and he eventually got the thumb from the actual um, specimen. And uh, he sent, he had to send the thumb back to, um, to, I believe it was either Britain or America. I think it it was Britain, I think. Right, Matt? And uh, yeah. so they had to smuggle it out of Nepal. So um, his contact said, we have a spy in uh, in India right now. So uh, make your way to India and uh, we'll give you more information. And they tell him, you got to go to this hotel, go to this room. And, you know, 
your contact will be there and they'll take the thumb from you and get it back to, to us. So when he gets to the hotel in India, he walks in the door of the hotel room and it's Jimmy Stewart, the actor, and his wife. They smuggled the Yeti thumb back to, uh, like I said, either the U.S. Or, or Britain in his wife's lingerie case. Um, she hid it in there. The lingerie case got lost. She, it took, I guess, probably several weeks till they found it. And I think it was because it was the British who actually found the thumb. And she said, that when she went to go claim it, she said, did you open it? They said, we would never open a lady's lingerie uh, case. And sure enough, the thumb was still in there. Um, and the thumb was, was studied, um, I believe at whatever or museum it was associated with over there. Maybe it was, um, Oxford or yeah. something like that. Um, it was found to not be a human thumb. Um, and I believe Matt, you can maybe fill in the gap there. I only thing that I saw was it was lost after that. Yeah. I, I believe that it's kind of one of those things that's, you know, just gone, you know, <laughs> Like the uh, like the giant skeletons at uh, the Smithsonian that supposedly right. existed, you know, right. they just right. leads us back to our government, which uh, which Bill had mentioned, right? Uh, stuff seems to disappear. Right. Yeah. The, and of course, they opened that suitcase. They, they just thought it was some weird sex toy, and they closed it up, and they're like, "Nah, nobody, <laughs> nobody opened it." What kind of weird, freaky stuff is this? You know, I, I, I as far as the, the the binding, here's the thing. As far as finding like a skeleton goes, I think they, my, in my opinion, if they're as smart as I think they are and humanoid, then they will bury their dead. The reason why they would bury their dead is because they know predators are going to eat them and they love their parents. They, or they love their, if it's a fan, you know, if it's a lone guy, you die in the woods and something eats you, they're disposed of. It's the thing. So if you're alone, yet Sasquatch in the woods and you die, um, scavengers will eat you, rip you apart and you'll be disposed. You'll be disposed of within three weeks, and be all over the woods. Yeah, they've done studies where a deer was completely no trace in just a few weeks. Yeah, exactly. So, so, but I think if it's a family unit, it's a mother and a father, or a couple of kids, whatever, and one of them die, which is very probable. I think the the they don't live very long, but mortality wise, I think they, they can get injured, they can get sick, they can get killed by predators. But if you do, they, then they yes, they bury them like. Yes. Thanks, Matt, for coming on. We appreciate yeah. your insight. You're very knowledgeable yeah. on this stuff, so we appreciate it. We're not just yeah, rambling. Thank, thank you for having me, uh, and it's nice meeting you guys. A pleasure. Yeah, and nice Bill, thanks, thanks for being here, too. God bless everyone. We'll see you next week. I don't know what we're going to What are we going to do next week, Tony? I was thinking if we do, like, Loch Ness, uh, but maybe we'll do a little bit more on on, uh, on uh, Bigfoot and pull Loch Ness into it, do, like, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the classic monster series or something, right? Oh, Loch Ness. Monster. Here we go. You guys know the cryptid. one. Cryptid. Yeah, they're called cryptid. Yeah, cryptid, Drifted. right? Cryptid. Cool. There you go. Well, well, whatever it is, we'll have something good planned, and we'll talk about <laughs> some crazy myth, legend of lore. And uh, we'll dive into it if it's real or legend right now. We all seem to agree Sasquatch is real, and we may find one at some point, but we all hope that they don't because, hey, let them live their life. For now, everybody, we'll see you next week on uh, uh, Dragon Storm's Ancient Myths, Legends, and Lore. Make sure to check out Anthony's book, Dragon Storm Gates, or Volume 2, Abracadabra. You'll see the link uh, here. My books are To Be a King, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, me and Bill have a new radio station called Con Conviction Radio. We're going to have all kinds of cool shows, but me and Bill are going to have a show. So check out our website at convictionradio.com. And uh, God bless. Everyone have a good week. Have a good week. Yeah. Yeah.